Welcome to Barnstable Today. I'm Nick Cortez. Just a reminder that full-length meetings, special events, and every program we air here on Channel 18 can be viewed online. You can find it all in the town's video archives at town.barnstable.ma.us. After meeting monthly throughout the summer, the town council gets back down to business on Thursday at 7 p.m. and resumes its regular bi-weekly meeting schedule. A look at this week's agenda reveals a number of town ordinance amendments and grant acceptances, plus an appropriation request to begin what's being called the Clean Water Education Initiative. For more detail on what to keep your eye on on this Thursday's meeting, we sat down for a preview with Assistant Town Manager Tom Lynch. Well, this Thursday begins the usual fall, winter, and spring meeting schedule of the Barnstable Town Council. They'll be meeting bi-weekly now for the next several months, and that, of course, means that we get to spend a lot more time with our friend, Assistant Town Manager Tom Lynch, and he joins us now. Hi, Tom. Hi, Nick. How are you doing? I guess it's been uh, August 5th was the last Town Council meeting, and here we are getting back into the uh, two-month schedule. So. Absolutely. So there's a lot to talk about on today's agenda. Let's start with uh, the old business for Thursday. Is there anything in your opinion that might be generating some interest? I think there'll be two items under old business. Uh, one is a vehicle storage ordinance that will come before us that uh, people will debate because it does impact uh, the ability of individuals to store uh, materials in their, on their property. So I think we'll see some debate at the public hearing on that. And then mm -hmm. there's also a public hearing uh, on the purchase of two relatively uh, small parcels uh, out in the industrial park uh, the, that the uh, Community Preservation Committee is bringing forward. The significance of those, though, however, is that they're tied into the possibility of a bike path that will eventually be linking Yarmouth down to Sandwich going across uh, some conservation restricted wildlife property. So this is a couple of small pieces to that, and we hope that uh, the council will approve them. Obviously a busy agenda in terms of new business for the council on Thursday. Uh, the first three items are police department grants, uh, well over $200,000 in grant money that's uh, coming to the Barnstable Police Department and other departments, I believe, around uh, the region. Tell us a little bit about these. Well, uh, uh, the Barnstable Police Department has done a wonderful job over the years of competing for these uh, grants statewide. Um, a couple of them will increase the tech their ability uh, to have additional technology, um, whether it's with the 911 system or with certain um, uh, materials they need for investigating crimes and such. One of the grants, uh, close to $100,000, uh, the town actually uh, acts as the intermediary for uh, Yarmouth and a couple of other towns. So we submit it and then pass all the money out to them. Mm -hmm. But the most significant grant, um, close to $200,000, is all around 911 uh, personnel where we the uh, police department functions, functions as the point agency for all the emergency services, and this helps fund that personnel. And uh, as I say, uh, we're lucky to have people, uh, you know, talented folks that can write the grants and compete for them. Well, Tom, speaking of grant money, uh, there is a large grant uh, coming from the federal government to the town of Barnstable that the town council will be asked to accept uh, nearly a million dollars, as a matter of fact, for uh, a project Cape-wide that's being called the Cape Cod Water Resources Restoration Program. Uh, this was part of a... I'm glad you said that. What's uh, that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure, no problem. And and I know this was a, a really large pot, pot of money, that, and uh, Congressman Bill Delahunt was yes. instrumental in securing this for Cape Cod. It's a 10-year program. This is the first cycle. Tell us a little bit about this. The town of Bonsville, early on, you know, put in for those areas that they wanted stormwater uh, restoration, shellfish restoration, and um, we're getting five of the, of the grants. Um, in this first five, out of the five million dollars that's all allocated in the first year. Um, so this, as you point out, will be a 10-year project. Um, there's the Rushy Marsh uh, uh, restoration project, there are selfish uh, herring run projects and stormwater projects. Um, it's actually a, around a $750,000 grant with a $250,000 match. Okay. Um, so um, the town council has had these projects before them um, through the uh, capital improvement project, but we've been unable to, uh, capital improvement program, but we're unable to fund them because we've just had other priorities that have come to the fore. So this is, again, part of the whole wastewater um, issue also because you're 
taking care of stormwater uh, runoff that often contributes to uh, pollution of, of our estuaries and, and, uh, and waterways. Uh, it's certainly uh, very, very valuable uh, money at a much needed time and uh, obviously this issue is in focus, water protection, wastewater management, stormwater management, uh, and one of the items that the town council will be dealing with uh, deals expressly with helping to educate people as we move towards November as uh, the entire population of the town of Barnstable will be dealing with some very, very important questions in terms of how we will move forward for many years to come managing our wastewater in the future. Well, I think the council president has appropriately been hearing from uh, citizens who have been coming before us talking about how and, and why we need various sewering projects and what should be uh, the combination of, you know, large sewer uh, expenditures versus uh, Title V systems versus, uh, you know, uh, mini systems uh, that might be uh, appropriate for a given area. And um, so in response to that, and also in the fact that there will be ballot questions where people will be trying to evaluate all the information, and as town employees, we really can't go out and speak to the ballot question, but we can try to address the educational issue that people have been bringing up. And while we've had on our website, you know, Stewart's Creek and other, um, uh, you know, DPW-related sewer information, it's often lengthy uh, documents and, and, and lengthy plans that one has to sift through. What we're hoping is to follow the example of uh, Falmouth, where they put together a three or four page brochure. Um, it talked about the different alternatives, talked about the financing of it, how long the bonding would be. Uh, a very nice piece that's, that's, you know, doesn't try to wait, you know, slant it toward one side or the other, just put the information in front of people. And I think that's what uh, individuals uh, have been asking for. So the town council will be considering uh, a, a wastewater issues education program coming up this Thursday evening. And it is about education, it is about information, but I would have to imagine that some people may interpret this as uh, a ploy to influence ballot question votes. Uh, what would you say to that? Uh, you know, we have to maintain our neutrality, so this will be a very um, uh, neutral piece. I, I think that most people, just as the Secretary of State puts out um, you know, information on their ballot questions uh, so that we can look at them and read the pros and cons, this will uh, show you the advantages and disadvantages of certain systems. Right, so it's uh, the idea then is to uh, provide everybody with every possible shred of information that they could need to make an informed decision themselves. Exactly. Very good. Now, uh, also, we should make mention of the fact that uh, before the agenda gets going and the council begins to work through it, uh, the official beginning of uh, what's known as Suicide Prevention Week will be uh, commemorated at the town council meeting. Can you tell us about that? Well, I know that, uh, you know, Council Barton has uh, long worked on uh, various youth and human services uh, issues, and uh, I believe she'll be bringing forward the um, other resolution recognizing, uh, bringing awareness and attention uh, to this issue. Uh, I know the council president has also been very involved with uh, several forums uh, around uh, the Cape because there have been, you know, youngsters that we know that have um, uh, committed suicide, unfortunately, and uh, we're trying to let um, everyone know that there are other alternatives and, and that when you see someone uh, exhibiting signs and, and signs of depression that would lead to uh, this drastic action that there are ways to um, uh, to bring about prevention and education is an important part of that and I'm sure the resolution will speak to that. Well once again the town council meets at seven o'clock this Thursday evening in the town hall hearing room and uh, Tom we appreciate the preview Thank and all the good much. information. Thank Very you. Good. Thank you. If you'd like to take a closer look at any of this week's town council agenda items a complete copy is available for download in the town council section of the town's website. Now, let's take a look at this week's remaining meetings. On Wednesday, September 1st, the Hyannis Main Street Waterfront Historic District Commission meets in the Selectman's Conference Room at 7 p.m. And on Thursday, September 2nd, the Town Council meets at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Hearing Room. Well, that's all for now. I'm Nick Cortese, and we'll see you next time on Barnstable Today.